At the foot of Erebus, out on the sea ice, the two tallest buildings on this continent are located. In these hangars, scientific payloads are being readied for their balloon launch into the stratosphere. We were interested in a neutrino detection project. Scientists are planning to lift an observation instrument 40 kilometers up into the stratosphere in search of almost undetectable subatomic particles. As it rises, this small looking bubble of helium will expand to fill the entire skin which here still looks like a white rope. It will eventually form a gigantic globe, more than 300 feet in diameter. When it reaches the stratosphere, the detector will scan thousands of square miles of ice without encountering electrical disturbances from the inhabited world. Prior to the launch, we were inside the hangar. The Neutrino project is led by Dr. Gorham of the University of Hawaii. So, so, what we're trying to do with this instrument is to be the first uh, scientific group to detect the highest energy neutrinos in the universe, we hope. Yeah, but Dr. Gorham, what exactly is a neutrino? The neutrino is, it's the most ridiculous particle you could imagine. It, you, a billion neutrinos went through my nose as we were talking. A trillion, a trillion of them went through my nose just now. And they did nothing to me. They passed through all of the matter around us continuously um, in a huge, huge blast of particles that does nothing at all. They're, they're like they, they almost exist in a separate universe, but we know as physicists we can measure them, we can make precision predictions and measurements. They exist, but we can't get our hands on them because they seem to just exist in another place. And yet, without neutrinos, the beginning of the universe would not have worked. We would not have the matter that we have today because you couldn't create the elements without the neutrinos. In the very, very earliest few seconds of the Big Bang, the neutrinos were the dominant particle. And they actually determined much of the the kinetics of the production of the elements we know. So the universe can't exist the way it is without the neutrinos, but they seem to be in their own separate universe. And we're trying to actually make contact with that otherworldly universe of neutrinos. And as a physicist, even though I understand it mathematically and I understand it intellectually, it still hits me in the gut that there is something here around, surrounding me, almost like some kind of spirit or God that I can't touch, and, but I can measure it. I can make a measurement. It's like measuring the spirit world or something like that. You can go out and touch these things. Not surprisingly, we found this incantation in Hawaiian language on the side of his detector. It was as if spirits had to be invoked. What would we see if we could film the impact of a neutrino? What you would see is you would see a lightning bolt about 10 meters long, about that thick, and it would blast at the speed of light over this, this 10 meter distance, and you would see the most beautiful blue light your eyes have ever seen. It happens in about um, the entire impulse of radio waves is up and down in probably a, um, one one hundred billionth of a second. It just goes bang and it's gone. And that's what we're looking for. Субтитры создавал DimaTorzok 
There is a, a beautiful saying by uh, uh, American um, uh, philosopher Alan Watts, and he uh, he used to say that uh, through our eyes the universe is perceiving itself, and through our ears the universe is listening to its cosmic harmonies, and uh, we are the witness through which the universe uh, is, becomes conscious of its glory, of its magnificence. Земли, хлеб наш насущный, дашь нам 